Hello everybody, welcome back to the Rusty Mats channel and welcome back to another video in my year 9 series. So this is my year 9 series on algebra. Thank you for following along. If you are new here, go ahead and subscribe below and hit that notification bell because these videos do come out pretty often and you don't want to miss one when it comes out. Why have I got all these things highlighted? Well, that's because all of my videos are in a particular order. I have written this curriculum specifically to support students with their learning without creating cognitive overload. So that's why I've got them in a particular order. If you are a student and you're trying to follow along, then it would be a good idea to follow that order. And to get that order, click on the pop-out banner up here and you're going to find my playlist where I've got everything in a nice order. Did you know that the Rusty Mats have got social? The Rusty Mats channel? Yes, we do. So check on the ribbon down here. Those are the different ways that you can see what else we get up to. I will encourage you to follow me on Instagram. Really, really important because that's where I put most of my silly stuff. Anyway, let's jump down into doing some inequalities because now we're on this new line. And I will say that once I'm finished, with inequalities, we will take a break from algebra and we're going to move on to a different topic. So look out for that one coming up and then we'll come back to algebra later on in the series. Okay, without further ado, let's go to some introduction to inequalities. Before we continue, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so you will know as soon as a new video has landed. Right, so here I wanted to start with a bit of a number line and I am going to put some bits and pieces down and then see if you can figure out um, some stuff. Now, first of all, I want to get rid of this myth from primary school that your inequality has to be facing a particular direction for it to be um, greater than or less than. So you would have seen this before. So most people will say this means greater than and this means less than. But it could mean whatever I want it to mean because it doesn't matter which direction it faces. What matters is what is facing the open side of it. So like for example, if I say that x is greater than 1, I can write it like that. But I can write also the same thing like this to say x is greater than 1. So I want you to get rid of that myth that if it's facing that way, it's definitely greater than if it's facing that way, it's definitely less than. Okay, I don't want you to be thinking like that. The open side is facing x, so x is greater than 1. The open side is facing x, so x is greater than 1. So that's the first thing that I want you to get rid of, okay, or to understand. Okay, the next thing is, here's my number line. Now, on my number line, if I go this way, then I'm getting less. And if I go that way, then I'm getting more or greater than. So that's the next thing I want you to, to understand. Now, let's go putting some inequalities on the number line to give you an idea as to what we're actually doing in this video today. So I'll put that up there just as a gentle reminder. All right. So we're going to start off, first of all, with some simple questions. So I'm going to start with x is greater than 1, x is greater than or equal to 1. Let's, yeah, yeah. So let's, let's leave it at that. Actually, you know, let's change it because they'll run into each other. So let's go for 6 there. All right, x is greater than 1. How do we represent that on a number line? Well, we find where 1 is. 1 is there. And if I want to get greater or go for more, I need to go that way. So I will represent it like this. And you put an open circle and an arrow going that way. And this is x is greater than 1. What about this one? x is greater than or equal to 6. What does that mean? Well, let's go then. Let's have a look. So 6 is there. So x is greater than or equal to 6. But this time I'm going to color this in x greater than or equal to 6. Why is this one opened and why is this one colored in? Well, the reason why that is, is because an open one means that it is not equal to 1. So if x is greater than 1, it means that we'll start at 2. So all the numbers that satisfy this would be 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way to infinity, except they tell you where to stop. 
But this one, when it says greater than or equal to, that little line under there means equal to as well. So that means it includes six. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then you go to infinity or, where, or wherever they ask you to stop. And so that's important. So at this point, you might want to pause the video and make yourself some notes to say that leave it open if it's not equal to, but color it in if it is equal to. Let's look at a couple more examples and then we're finished because this is going to be a really, really short video. So now I'm going to go for x is less than or equal to negative 1 and x is less than uh, negative 3. Okay. So let's go for that and see what happens. So less than, x is less than or equal to negative one. So I go to negative one, draw my stalk, put my zero, my circle, and because it's less than, I'm gonna go to the left. This time I will color it in. Reason why I will color it in? Because it's also equal to. Okay, so it's less than or equal to. And then down here, less than negative three, so I'm gonna go there, draw my circle, and then go to the left again, but this time I will not color it in because it is not equal to. All right, good, good, good. Let's start messing with your head for one last thing. Um, so for that, I'm gonna take all this off, and I'm going to do um, another one like this, X. It's greater than or equal to four, negative four, but less than one. What are we, what is that? Well, the reason why I've put this one down is to reinforce the point I was making up here. Get rid of this myth that you've got from primary school, you know, where, it, where when it face a particular direction, then it's right. Because this one, you have to read it from the middle. And so when you read it from the middle, you start here, what you're actually saying is x is greater than or equal to negative 4 because the open side is facing x. So I'm going to go to my negative 4 and I'm going to color that in and it's going that way. I'm not going to put the arrow on it yet. Go back to the middle again. x is less than 1. So go to 1 on my number line and this time I'm not going to color it in and less is going this way. So just come and join these two lines. And that is finished, that's it. That's what one like this would look like. Now, last of all, if they say, can you state the integers? Ooh, I didn't mean to rub all that out. If they say, can you state the integers that represent this inequality? What they want you to do, or list the integers, what they want you to do is write down all the numbers that fit this inequality. Well, you can see it on my on my number line because it includes four because it's greater than or equal to minus three, minus two, minus one, zero. We will stop here because this is not colored in and it does not include one. So if you were to list the integers, put my curly brackets, it would be minus four, minus three, minus two, minus one and zero. We will stop here and this is now finished all right and that brings us to the end of the video guys so i hope you were enjoying that and if you were please give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe below don't also forget to hit that notification bell because these videos come out pretty often but did you get that was that all right for inequalities today good i hope you did but for now until i see you on the next one